Hey guys, welcome to 3 and Out. You can check out the podcast below in the description. And here's what I need you to do. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel to stay up to date to everything we're doing here on 3 and Out and the Volume. I wanted to start with what we just witnessed. And I just want to check the final scores. 25 to nothing. And I've always been a big believer in the statement because I think it's a pretty tried and true formula if you think about life like this and if you just observe everything around you. The cream always rises. Always. Now, it doesn't always go at the same speed. Depending on what industry you're in, the people you're around, hell, we all take different paths. And some people pop immediately. Some things take a while. Some businesses... It happens overnight success. Others can take 20, 30 years. But I think the best people in their field, the best people in their industry, if they obviously have the work ethic and the focus and the discipline, if they stay focused, will come out on top. And at minimum, have a lot of success. And Bill Belichick is a good example of that. He lost Tom Brady, and let's face it, most of you were shitting on him. Where it was all Tom! It was all Tom! And I said this last week, I judge you not on your best moments. We've all had good moments in life, right? We, you know, most girls look good on their wedding day. How do you look on a random Tuesday? You know, most guys can, you know, drop some weight on a diet. Can you maintain it for years? Anyone can be nice for a day. How do you treat people when no one's looking, right? Belichick in his lowest moment, when he had a quarterback who could not complete passes, Still went seven and nine. This year, he had all offseason, builds a defense, signs a bunch of guys, help, trades Gilmore midseason. He never even played a snap for him. Drafts a quarterback, signs some wide receivers and tight ends, rebuilds his team. This year, has some tough early losses. Doesn't complain, doesn't, you know, doesn't smile, doesn't frown, just looks like a little curmudgeon that he is. But he's the greatest coach in the history of the sport. And most importantly, he's the greatest defensive coach in the history of the sport. Watch the two Bills. Bill Parcells gives him credit for devising the game plan to beat Bill Walsh to go to the Super Bowl and then to build it to beat the Buffalo Bills. That's Belichick. He was the brains of the schematical operation. In an offensive league, I talk about this, I've been saying it for weeks with Mike Vrabel. We don't give guys like that credit because it's all about offensive coaches. The greatest defensive coach in the league is kicking everyone's ass right now on defense. And now that he has a serviceable offense, and we'll get into Mac Jones in a second, his team's headed for an 11 or 12 win season. Now, I don't think they have enough firepower. I don't think their quarterback's good enough to ultimately win the division because I do think the Bills' defense is really good and just Josh Allen, he's just much better than Mac Jones. But I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. And let's face it, early on in the season when they lost some of those Kind of heartbreakers, right, to Dallas in overtime. That Tampa game on the missed field goal, we went. A lot of people did. All the Patriots, all oh, they're screwed. No, guys. They have the best coach in the history of the sport. He was never going to go out like a chump. He's too good. He is notoriously for working like 20 hours a day. He does not get tired. The guy does not get phased. That documentary that's coming out about John Madden had pictures of when John Madden was coaching for the Raiders in 1975 and 1976 and 1977. On the opposing sideline was a young assistant named Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick has been coaching in the NFL since the mid-70s. I'm 37 years old, and I was born in the mid-80s. This guy's knowledge of the sport, combined with his work ethic, his drive, His ultimate ability to constantly adapt and change is unparalleled. It's the best. (laughs) And now he has a team, and it took him a year with the Brady thing to figure it out. He's figured it out. They're 7-4. and Let me pull up their schedule a little bit. Now they got a long little layoff. Their next game, uh, the Titans, pretty big game. Game's in Foxborough. I'll promise you this. Belichick will be ready. Then he's got – he basically has the division will be decided – in December. Plays the Bills, then at the Colts, and then the Bills again. That's the season. And his bye is after the first Bills game. So the Titans at the Bills, his next two games. Let's just say he split. Let's say he beats the Titans, loses to the Bills. He would be 8-5. and five. 
Then he gets then he gets a bye. Then he gets the Colts. Then he gets the Bills. He finishes with the Jags and Dolphins. So even if he doesn't win the division, he's winning, I would say, at minimum 10 games. Pretty solid comeback for a guy who spent all the money, and everyone's like, oh, Bill's just spending money. What's he doing? He knows what he's doing. You see Matt Judon kicking offensive tackles ass every single week. Kyle Van Oy, Brian Flores cuts. Sure looks like Bill's figured out how to use him. Gets rid of Gilmore. Oh, is this guy J.C. Jackson. Has like six picks this season. Another pick six tonight. Didn't he have a pick six two weeks ago? Guy's got pick six every time I look up. Uh, Belichick, tip your hat to him. Give him his flowers, as the kids would say. I do think we need to pump the brakes a little bit on Mac Jones. And listen, I'm not trying to diminish what the guy's accomplished. It is hard. I don't care how good your team is to start as a rookie. The NFL is very difficult. It's Your margin for error, coming, especially coming from Alabama, is much smaller in the pros. But I listen to some of these shows, not that many, I'm not, I don't even listen to Sports Talk Radio, but some of these podcasts, and I, I think a lot of people are anointing him like he's some superstar, like he's Andrew Luck. Listen, I swear to God, I didn't chart it, but since the start of the Brown games to about midway through the Falcon game, he had thrown like 12 or 13 screens. Anytime your team, like their team is based on two things, playing defense and running the football, which... I mean, it's great. I, I would Any quarterback would like that, right? It's the quarterback's best friend, having a good defense and having a good running game. But he really benefits from that. He does not have to throw the ball 40 times a game. So when you're seeing, well, he only had four incompletions. Well, he's throwing five, six screens a game, and he's pushed the ball down the field. He throws some picks. He threw his eight interception tonight. Again, really good player. Very impressive to do this with the Patriots. I give him a lot. He, to me, he's two things that I really admire in any quarterback. The most underrated aspect of the position, he's tough. If you're tough, you got a chance. If you're tough and smart, you got a chance to play for a long time. He's both those, both those things. But his physical attributes, his arm's not that great. He gets to dink and dunk all game. And if someone texted me tonight, they said they were watching ESPN last Sunday. Teddy Bruschi was breaking it down how Belichick did the same thing for Tom Brady as a rookie which is good coaching. Make it easy for him. But he's lucky a lot of teams wouldn't have the defense good enough to do this for him. They would get behind. The Patriots just get pick sixes every game. Shit, they had two tonight. Maybe not two because he stepped out of bounds, but they had multiple picks. So, again, I will commend him to play consistently every week to, as Belichick would say, do your job. But we're acting like he's a Pro Bowl player. He's just simply not. Right now, that doesn't mean he can't be. Uh, you know, I do question like how great of a player he can be, but I have come around. He's better than even I thought. Though, back to what I said, he's playing for the greatest coach of all time. He's playing for one of the greatest offensive coordinators of his era. He's playing on, you know, I haven't studied every defense in the league, but I think it's fair to say just... I don't know what the numbers and the metrics say, but it sure as hell looks like to me the Patriots are a top three defense in the league. And they have several running, they have a stable of running backs. And they probably have one of the best screen games in the league. And they got two good tight ends, which he's doing a good job hitting the tight ends. I'll give him that. He made a couple good throws. He's not scared in the pocket. But let's stop acting like he's just headed to Canton, you know, where one day he's going to be some $50 million a year quarterback. He's benefiting a lot from it right now, doing a great job. And really, all Belichick needed, again, last year he went 7-9 and nine with a quarterback who could not complete passes. He now has a guy that can complete, complete passes. They're headed for, you know, 11-5. Or I guess that's the old yays. 11-6. and six. They, they, Honestly, they feel like an 11-6 and six season. Which, that's what Belichick does. He wins. Thanks for watching 3 and Out. You can check out the podcast below in the description. And make sure you subscribe right now to the Volumes YouTube channel.